In this video, we'll learn how to set up a DPDK development environment on your own laptop. DPDK requires a compatible NIC, but since we don't have that, we are going to emulate a NIC inside a virtual machine. And to do that, we need the kernel virtual machine available in Linux. So the first thing we'll check is whether we have kernel virtual machine support or not. And thus KVM dash OK command allows us to do that. If you don't have that, install it via the CPU checker. The setup I have is a bare basic uh, Ubuntu 20.04 that I have just installed on my laptop. Once you run sudo kvm ok, you will see that uh, kvm acceleration can be used, at least on my laptop. If you do not have that, you need to enable virtualization and you can Google how to do that. Now that we know that um, kvm is available for us, at least it is something that I can use, we will install KVM and its related libraries. And I'll fast forward through the installation. All right, now that we have that set up, we need to add uh, my user to the groups of libvirt and KVM. My user being Ruthvora should be added to libvirt and KVM. Uh, I think my user is already in libvirt. Um, yes, and I'll also add that to KVM. All right. This allows your user to access KVM and virtual machines. The next thing we need is word manager. It's not a necessary thing, but it allows you to have a GUI for virtual machines. The current command that we did, virtual list all, checks if whether KVM is something that has been set up properly. And the next command status of libvirtd is active or running. If it's not active, you need to do sudo systemctl start libvirtd to set it up. Now we'll uh, install word manager so that we have an easy GUI access. All right, we'll run word manager. Uh, we'll create a new VM uh, from a local installation media and First of all, I'm going to add a new pool, which is going to be my downloads directory because that's where I'm going to get the Ubuntu server image to go inside the VM. Now, I do not have the Ubuntu server image, so I'm just going to download it. Um, this is also the 20.04 uh, Ubuntu live server edition that is. And one thing you make sure is it, uh, Ubuntu has this feature called multipass that it highlights but this is not what we want because Multiplass would not allow you to simulate a specific NIC, which we'll come across later. Uh, we'll fast forward to the download. Now you don't see it here, so you refresh and there you have the Ubuntu 20.04 live server. Choose, it automatically detected Ubuntu. Give as much memory as you can, at least four GB. CPUs, um, preferably more than two, and this size at least 30 GB, I'm giving 50. Um, you can name it DPDK. The uh, major important thing is to select customize configuration before install. Without that, you can't do the next step. You see the NIC that is connected, the network interface card is a Voit IO. And we'll add another one, which is the E1000E. This is the card that DPDK supports and we can use it. All right. So we'll begin allocation and we'll fast forward through installation. Um, I'm mostly keeping the settings default. And so we'll fast forward to that. Here you need to remember the IP addresses of the interfaces, especially the one that is Voit.io and the, the second one that is the Intel E1000E. You need to know which one is which. Then again, fast forwarding through the default setup. Here, please install OpenSSH server so that you can access the VM from outside. Um, yeah, so done. We'll again fast forward through the installation and we're good to go. We are rebooting the VM now. Uh, the installation is complete. All right. So moving on, uh, let the system reboot. Yes, uh, the right side is the rebooted system. I am doing IF config, it does not exist. So I installed it using a sudo apt install net hyphen tools. IF config I'm using right now just to see the IP addresses in case you missed it in the first step. 
So SSH, um, the IP address of the first interface, not the Intel NIC, the other Voight IO NIC. This is what we are using. I'm using the username Ruth Vora, uh, although my username is Ruth Vora, so I do not need to enter that. And yeah, I'm gonna log in. You see, this works now. All right. So, but it's a pain to type the password every time. So the sensible thing to do is to generate a keygen, save it as the default keygen that you have. And now uh, you try to SSH again, you can remove the username if the username are same inside and outside the VM, otherwise no. Here it asks for password and the reason for that is we still haven't told the VM that we need authentication or we should allow authentication from this particular uh, external host. So you see that I'm opening the public ID, ID underscore ED25519 dot pub. I'm copying my public key and I'll be pasting that inside the VM uh, shortly. So as you see, I log in there, I go to the dot SSH and there's already a, a file there authorized keys. I just go there and paste it. And you see it's pasted, control X, Y, for save and enter. Now if you can exit and log in again and it won't ask you for the password. It's authenticated already. All right, so now that we have the setup ready, we can get rid of the VM and work directly from our host terminal. All right, so the first thing to do here with DPDK is not to click on get started, but instead go to options DPDK core and click on download you need to get DPDK. So we can go to the uh, link and right click, copy a link and paste it here as W get space the, the link. So that will download the link as you can see. Now we need to untar tar is like zip so we need to untar this tar space xf space the zip or the tar.xz file and once we are done with that um, we are going to run the meson build command so for that uh, we'll first go to the documentations that are there in the pdk because we need to install quite a few applications before we can build it we need to install um, build essential as you see on the right side. Uh, we also need to install Meson and Ninja, but please do not do pip3 install Meson Ninja. I had quite a few problems with that. Just do sudo apt install Meson and Ninja will be installed with it. You also need Python 3 Py ELF tools. Please copy and use the apt command and not the pip3 command that had some issues also. And finally, libnuma dev that's mentioned there. An optional addition is pkgconf, the pkgconfig application. It's not necessary, but it's nice to have in some of the configurations that you might want to do later. So I'm going to install those. And yes, and fast forward through the installation. All right. Now that is done, uh, we can see that uh, the extracted folder exists and we can go and do um, meson build there. So we are gonna go here, we are gonna see meson minus d examples equals all. We are going to pass the flag minus d examples equals all so that it builds all the examples along with the uh, DPDK core. This is gonna take some time. Um, so I'm just going to fast forward through that. And once that is done, as you see, uh, the last line says that we have Ninja already installed. All right, so the next step is to do my Ninja minus C build. Minus C just specifies the directory that you want to build into. So we are gonna fast forward to the build. It takes quite a lot of time, so have patience. Uh, then go into the build folder and now you have to do uh, sudo ninja install. All it does is copies the build files into um, 
global directories like user or um, bin. ldconfig just loads those files so that you can now access them. Oh, oops, sudo. Yeah, all right. Now that is done and we have dpdk ready. All right, next step. What we are going to do is we are going to uh, go into sudo minus i so that we don't have to type sudo every time. And there's a command which will autocomplete dpdk dev bind. You see the status. It shows you the PCIe express port number, the um, ethernet number, ENP2S0, the current driver connected E1000E, and we have a VFIO PCI driver, which could be used, but the status right now is active. That means um, if you try currently binding it to DPDK, it will just say that it should not do that considering the connection is active. I've config ENP2S0 down would, well, put the, active status to inactive and as you see that that's what has happened next now we will load uio and uh, uio pci generic um, modules in the kernel the reason we do that is vfio pci had some issues when dealing with inside the vm so we had to use uio pci generic which is the most available module right now now you see that there are two unused modules vfio pci and uio pci generic and the active status has gone. All right, that's all I want. Now we do a bind with which module, with UIO PCI generic of what PCI device 0200.0, which is the gigabit network ethernet connection that currently uses E1000E driver. All right, that is done. And if you see the status, it will show you that um, the, there are network devices that use the kernel driver that is the one we have SSH from and this is why we need two devices because the other one would not would disconnect your SSH and the network devices using DPDK compatible driver that's above there yes that one uh, that's the one uh, that is currently using the UIO PCI generic and is bound to DPDK or at least DPDK can use this device now all right uh, that sets up the first link that we wanted with DPDK. Now that that is done, um, let's go back. You don't need um, to be the root user at this point. So even if you exit, the device has already been bound and that will uh, reflect even now if you do DPDK dev bind minus S, the status option. All right. Uh, now we go again back to the dpdk build directory and to the examples that we built. Um, if you remember just a few moments ago, we chose to build all the examples. This is going to come in handy right now. And we move to that directory. As you see, there are so many examples, a lot of them exes, there are um, binaries, etc. Eth tool, it also exists because normal eth tool won't work with dpdk bound drivers. But what we are interested in is the hello world program for now. All right, so let's try to run the hello world program. It's going to give you an error. As you see, there's a panic in main, cannot init EAL. So the first thing you need to do is set up uh, huge pages. If you don't know who you, what huge pages are, please go um, Google it or I'll attach a link later. I did sudo minus i so that I don't have to type sudo in front of all the commands for the huge pages. I still try to run it and it still has some error. All right, so as we know, uh, there are some EAL things missing. So we are just going to uh, search what EAL parameters are and what we need. As you see here, uh, EAL has a lot of parameters. The more, one of the important ones is list of cores to run on, the minus L option. And there's another one which is minus N set the number of memory channels to use. That is how many RAM sticks do you have on your PC that is. Okay, so I'm going to set uh, zero and one. If you do not know how many cores you have or which cores you want, you can run HTOP and see 
you have I have four cores, but the cores are numbered from 0, 1, 2, 3 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, minus L, 0 to 1, I just want two cores and minus N, 2 because I have two RAMs on my laptop, two RAM sticks on my laptop. And the last thing is sudo. Okay, we run this, we see that we have hello from core 1 and hello from core 0. So hello world works successfully and we have set up um, our DPDK development environment on our laptop.